Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to the Easy Achievers Gaming Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Elijah, still wishing that I was playing Destiny. Sitting across from me is Alex. What is up? How are you today? Wanted to go back to Destiny as well. Me too. I feel that strong, strong urge to go pick up a controller and blow off all other responsibilities today. Yes. Alex, what do we do again? That's right, a gaming podcast. This is where we discuss the previous week in gaming, maybe go over a topic or two, if you like us, please check us over on all podcast services and YouTube live every Friday. If you enjoy our content, please give us a like, give us a give us a five stars, give us that five Androids or five SoundClouds, whatever they're called, on each respective platform. If you like that even more than that, please head over to patreon.com slash easy achievers. Give us the buck. Give us five bucks if you really like us. Twenty bucks, we might strip a little for you. Mm. Mm, see that too. Hey, no, I can't say that. Don't part. forget. I can't say that. Don't part. forget. The Chun Li situation. Of course, the Chun Li situation. Yeah, we give us that. And I'll Sixty do this bucks. Yep. We'll do the Chun. <laughs> yeah, yep. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, check out our socials. Scream at us. Twitter at EVM that doesn't at Crazy Phil Skater. Same thing on Instagram. Let's get into the week. We have a lot of PlayStation news, and I mean a lot. Yeah. We got some Destiny news as well. Mm. That reminds me, Alex. I have a question. What's up? What you been playing? Destiny 2 Shadowkeep. We've been playing nothing but Destiny 2 Shadowkeep until our eyes bleed. Yep. And it's really fun. As of recording, this is Wednesday, so the day after the official release the of... The second, yeah. This is the third. No, no, it is the second. It is the second. It is the second. Yeah. You, you dastardly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's so good. Do you like it, Alex? Oh, God, You yeah. played a little more than I have. Yes. You got to catch up a little bit. Yes. Um, what is your overall sentiment of the game? I like it. I'm, you're I'm you're actually... coming at a different angle. I had prepped for about a month and a month mm-hmm. before playing into this do you feel like you're behind at all um at first i was because I, I was like whoa there's a lot of things mm-hmm. um they like have, I have simplified a lot of things but yeah no nice. yeah oh my especially god especially yes. with infusions yes that's amazing <laughs> quick, i don't have to worry about that quick thing for everyone listening if you like destiny you will like shadow keep it is also free to play everything in year one destiny is now free to play so if you download destiny 2 on any platform you are now free to play, and of course it has cross saves as well. So you can mm. link everything and have one main account on your PlayStation, your PC, your Xbox. I'm assuming at some point the Switch. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Speaking of PlayStation, sad news. Mm. Weird news, by the way. Very weird. This is over on PlayStation's Twitter and nowhere else. It is with great emotion. That we announce that Worldwide Studios Chairman Sean Layden will be departing SIE. His visionary leadership will be greatly missed. We wish him success in future endeavors and are deeply grateful for his years of service. Thanks for everything, Sean. What? How? I mean, it's been. This is he's been of in September Sony. 30th at mm. 7:05 p.m. He, he's been with what Sony happened? since what? 98? Was it? 30 years, I think. Can you, can you do a quick Bing search? Because we use Bing in this household. I've, the, I was on Twitter and just read this and sat there in shock. It was like, there's not a press release. There is no official statement by this gentleman, Sean Layden. There's no statement by official PlayStation, which this you could say is a statement, but it isn't. It's just kind of a, he's leaving. And it's just it's stating the fact. Sean Lane is, in fact, leaving. What does this mean for Sony? What does this mean for PlayStation, of course, is what our biggest question is. Is there major changes hooking up? Because if if this happens so fast, I can only imagine, and now we go into our famous tinfoil hat section of the show where we just debate wildly on what happened because we never will know what happened unless we see him at come at Microsoft or open his own game studio or something. But how long? Uh, no, you're good. Uh, okay. It says, Layden has been with Sony since 1987. It was named the president of CEO of Sony Computer Entertainment America years. in two, uh, 2014. Over 30 years of service, mm-hmm. and this man gets a tweet. <clears throat> like, what? Something happened. Yeah. like He has another job somewhere, <clears throat> and he's leaving. And they he probably put in his two weeks, and they said, get out. Or... <clears throat> he just didn't want to make a big deal. <laughs> Maybe. He, <laughs> That's honestly, I feel like he just didn't want to make a big deal. It could, it, it could be. If Which is crazy. I mean, okay, first, first, the uh, God, what was his name? The dude from Nintendo, Reggie. Reggie fees me. Reggie, he's leaving. Which, well, we know for sure though, because that was more clear. He made a goodbye video. No, I know. He retired. Yeah. And now he's just kind of a guy who goes to colleges and speaks. Yeah. Well, I'm saying he left. Sean's leaving. 
Phil's not leaving. Phil will never leave. No. If Phil leaves... He loves it too much. I'll have to jump off buildings. <laughs> you want that on your conscience, Phil? Stay right there, all right? All right. <laughs> Speaking of Phil Spencer and the Xbox Game Pass, <laughs> <laughs> PS Now has an update. They have updated their pricing, weirdly enough. They went down. It didn't go Finally. Up. Finally. I think this is well overdue. Oh, my God. Because we had Game Pass at such a fantastic price. Oh and God, we had yes. PlayStation Now at, I think it was $120. It is now half the price of each thing, I believe. Um, if I remember correctly, it is now twenty bucks. Uh, well, sorry, it used to be twenty bucks. Yeah, now, now it's, it's 10. ten. Yes, sixty bucks for a year. Yep. Used to be a hundred. That's right. It used to be a hundred. Yeah. It used to be a hundred and twenty, like OG. Yeah. PS nowadays. Does this motivate you to get it? No. They did announce that God um, of War and all this stuff. No, for people who are strictly PlayStation and like want a Game Pass type uh, like for PlayStation, you should get it because there's a lot of good content in there. But I I'm, think there's a lot of value too. Yeah, no, right? there you is. You get God of War, you get Uncharted Spider-Man 4 and Spider-Man. Spider-Man yeah. yeah, so I mean 60 bucks God, yeah. for already right there, three I mean, fantastic. I mean, God, games. yeah, one of those games is already sixty bucks already, so you're already mm-hmm. pretty much getting the other two free. Mm-hmm. I think Spider Man's forty, right? I think something like that. Yeah, but if you like, now, if you think about the game of the year one, yeah, the game 60. of the year is forty. I think. Is that that was sixty? I, think so. I thought it was sixty. I don't know. I make things up all the time. Alex. Speaking of PlayStation, PS 4s <laughs> God, so much PlayStation. <laughs> Who would have thought? We thought we were Xbox. They're now selling strictly to you. That's right. They are selling on their PlayStation.com strictly bundles or VRs or controllers. They're selling hardware on their systems. They This is over on their blog. Integrated within the PlayStation.com website, you can now easily navigate from hardware and game product information pages directly to purchasing these PlayStation products from our store, ranging from PS4, PS4 Pro, and PS VR systems and bundles, as well as headsets, DualShock 4s, PS VR accessories, a selection of physical games, and voucher codes for PS Plus subscriptions. Making moves they are right mm-hmm. this is over a span of about two weeks they not only start selling on their own market they reduce the cross of ps now they kick sean Layden out because they're done with his garbage <laughs> <laughs> i love sean Layden. i'm just kidding of course of uh, we all know he will land on his feet that's a good man um they're making moves this is i think clearly gearing up for next gen right mm-hmm. clearly getting ready for yeah. ps5 they're going to have this. I'm, I wouldn't even be surprised if they change the name of PS Now when PS5 comes out just to rebrand it into like mm-hmm. something different. So, because I'm sure plenty of people have been burned by yeah, PS Now. I think they, they're, they these are, go back. those first three titles that, for PS4, I think that's a entry to when they add it to PS5. There's going to be a lot more PS4 games on there. Um, oh, for sure, right? Yeah. Yeah, they're definitely they're going to stock that thing full. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. You can still stream things, and technically, you can't on xbox but i don't see what i don't like that though what i'm just mean? saying i'm just saying there's a difference well because on ps now you can stream ps3 games oh well, yeah. Yeah, well you can finally download them well, not I think ps3 or ps4 i thought you can download them like offline thing bing or whatever it for me, brother bing it for gotcha. me make sure but i'm pretty sure it's just ps4 you can download games only ps4 games you still have to stream ps3 hmm. games he is double checking with mr bing of course um to uh uh back us up here but i'm pretty sure that's correct um i'm very interested this next year this this next gen has got me probably the most excited i've ever been for just about anything because there's so much unknown mm-hmm. is what sean Layden put in place still happening with ps5 uh you assume they can't be that quick with changing so we're gonna see at least two years three years maybe even four of sean Layden ps5 and then whoever takes his place will revert that connection. I'm very curious on what his plan was. Was it to we keep PS5 where we did with PS4, where we stick with games, we make games, you make great games, and then you sell the system because of the games on them? Or do we get more of a switch to more of a maybe VR focus, maybe a mix of the two, maybe more show bait like mm. there's so much that can go this way and let's not forget they have that new movie studio that they can integrate into all of this yeah I saw so i'm curious that. if that will happen they have playstation view like there's just so many things that they can integrate into a main service mm. that it's becoming more um entertainment based than even xbox one was 
at launch when they spoke about having your TV through them and all that. I feel like this is even more of that whole sentiment of TV, movies, and games all in one. Mm-hmm. PlayStation is actually geared up pretty seemingly geared in their spot with being an entertainment hub. Again, with PlayStation View, their new movie studio coming with all the PlayStation moves. And then, of course, Sony does sell movies. They make they make movies. And then they have um, uh, their new Plus coming. And then they have the PS now like imagine a subscription and this isn't all and it don't ever happen but imagine a subscription where you pay 60 70 dollars and you get view now plus and uh, something else like that would be insane right mm-hmm. like do you what do you think is that too crazy of me should I shut up and drink the coffee <laughs> I mean no I think I agree with you um still trying to find that yeah, it's, it, it's somebody put on here so that, that didn't make sense, and it, that's why I did that face. I was like, what? It, it hit you back? Yeah. It hit no. you back? Um, no, I think you are right, though. The PS3 thing, it has to be streamed and ps 4s download. Yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure it is. Yeah. We can move on. Um, but I do think we're getting a much... I, I am very interested to see if we see a melding of services with PlayStation. Yeah. Again, I, with uh, Now, View. No, I think they'll the try... Movie. though Because they have so many... Um, Services. services that mm-hmm. I feel like they're going to try to simplify them. All through PlayStation. Them. They have Sony TVs, and these mm-hmm. are through Playstations. Yeah. I'm very... Uh, did did the... Do you remember... I think it's years ago now, but do you remember when they were trying to get games to play through the TV? Did that ever happen? What remember is- Sony wanted to make games playable through a TV, so you would just buy the TV and, and play oh, you through the TV? Are talking about those Sony TVs? Yeah. yeah I wonder if they're still you, trying to work on that. Well, I think they do have I think you just buy it. You get PlayStation now on the TV. Uh, you, you just download it on the TV. And then you really? can just connect your PS4 controller. No way. Yeah, because I think I um, one of my uh, college mm-hmm. teachers, he has mm-hmm. a Sony TV, and he, has, mm-hmm. he plays PS4. Whoa. He said he was playing his PS4 games on his TV Whoa! So I don't. I Anyone don't, know firmly and ever tried yeah, that? Tell I, me. That's what he I'm told me. But I don't know how that works. That yeah. sounds cool. Like not having an actual system and just streaming the game—that's wild. Yeah, reminds me of Stadia. That's. I, I think that's what it's like. Pretty much, it is. Like, do you think Mr. Sean Layden mm. appears at Stadia? That would explain such the quick turnaround, right? He gets one tweet and no mm. other mentions. Do you mm-hmm. think he goes to Stadia? Does he go to Microsoft? I don't think he goes to Microsoft. I'm just, I'm just spitballing things. I'm curious. I think he will go to another company. Does he start his own studio? Uh, I mean, is he c- interested in making games? I assume no. I, I don't know. Has he, he ever been uh, wanting to do that? That he has he said anything about that? No, because he he seemed to be more engineering, right? Uh, yeah, maybe he's yeah. more of an idea guy. So yeah, maybe yeah, he can, yeah. maybe he could be an idea man behind, like a director behind a video game. Because mm-hmm. I'm sure he knows how video games work now, so yeah. he can maybe help a studio through. He can <clears throat> guide a studio through this process. Maybe he helms his own studio and makes up Sean Lane games or something. Go H- the Hideo Kojima route. Mm-hmm. Fantastic times, Alex. Moving on. Call of Duty is getting a PS4 exclusive mode for an entire year, sticking That's crazy. with PS4. Just when it seemed like the platform exclusivity wars were starting to die down a bit, as of yesterday, we now have one of the most absurd displays of this practice I've ever seen with Call of Duty Modern Warfare. This is over by Forbes by Paul Tassi. Modern Warfare was part of Sony's State of Play stream, and the main focus was the story trailer, but buried inside it was a nugget for PlayStation owners specifically. Though blinked, you'll miss the times it was mentioned. That would be survival mode, which is a mode contained within another mode, the return of Spec Ops missions. Fans have been happy to see these smaller scale co-op focus missions return, and survival mode looks to be a horde mode adjacent spin on that concept. As the trailer says, it's first on PlayStation. But first actually means first for an entire year. The tiny period in the bottom feels that this mode is exclusive to PlayStation until October 1st, 2020. We have seen past instances where DLC or something is given out on a platform a week or a month early. Or something like that, which has been annoying enough. But giving a platform an entire mode all to itself for an entire year is something we have not seen before. Wild. Yeah. Wild. Um, I first thought. They mm-hmm. got Spec Ops for a year. Like, the whole thing. Oh, then yeah. I was, I was like, that's an entire part of the game, and I actually got upset. Yeah. Then I realized it's just survival mode, and then I was like, okay, I don't Yeah, care. Cool. I said the same thing. I was like, eh, it's... Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be honest. I'm still I really getting, a lot of I'm people still got getting upset. Spec Ops. A lot of people got upset. Mm. You know, I'm sure there's plenty of people listening that got upset. Yeah. 
I don't care enough about their horde mode to care about this. So if you did care about the horde mode, I would be upset if I only had access to maybe an Xbox or PC. I would be upset that I wasn't getting an entire mode that I was looking forward to. Mm. But I really couldn't care less. Yeah. Um, I will play Spec Ops, though. We will play Spec Ops. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, I remember fun. when we modeled for two, that one with the... Uh, I never beat that last the, Juggernaut. Those Juggernaut ones? Oh. Never beat it. I never beat it. I think I three-starred every single mission. But Except that for one. that last one. Yeah, okay. That yeah. very last one. I think, what was it? You had to kill two Juggernauts or something? Oh, God. I don't remember. It's a three-star. I think we kept getting two stars. Was there was so something. Annoying. And then there was achievement for just knifing him, wasn't it? Uh, that was a awful, awful I thing. I can't remember. Awful thing. Alex, Apex Legends is getting another map and character for Season 3. This is over mm. on Venture Beat by Jeff Groob. Developer Respawn announced today that it's launching a new map for its battle royale shooter Apex Legends. The studio will roll out this new environment at the start of the game's Season 3 content, which begins October 1st. So, yesterday, Season 3 is mm. Respawn's biggest attempt to shake up Apex Legends since launching it in February. The free-to-play shooter found massive success early on with more than... 50 million players in the first couple weeks following its release. It has since fallen to a more reasonable position as a very popular game with millions of regular players. But now, Respawn and publisher Electronic Arts are looking to renovate to dedicated and lapsed players. A new season is also an opportunity to attract new players for the first time. Apex Legends goes to a new planet. Respawn launched a CG trailer that shows a new map in action today. You can watch that above in this article. For it. it reveals that the Legends are leaving Kings Canyon behind to take on a new map called World's Edge. Here's how Respawn describes it. Quote, Welcome to World's Edge, a new Apex Legends map where molten heat and chemical ice collide. Join our cast of Legends, including the newest Legend Crypto, on the dropship as they were whisked from planet Solas towards World's Edge on planet talos end quote i tried to do the e- e- e3 trailer woman talk mm. it didn't work i don't think mm. i think i lost it near the end there just a little bit just a little you tried to and then, like they said new, new character new weapon and new map which no one saw coming no one saw a new map coming no which yeah. is awesome yeah you get a whole new map we have not played any of this yet because we were up destiny's butt the entire day yep and that was amazing um but i will play this eventually i'll get to it the uh skins look really cool Lifeline has like a demon skin, which looks awesome. Yeah. Did you look at the Battle Pass trailer? By I have, uh, no, I have not actually. Have They're all like fire and ice themed. So yeah. like Lifeline looks like a fire demon and um, Pathfinder looks like, like an ice robot. Mm. It looks really cool. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Alex, do you remember Borderlands 3? Yeah. It's that we, game we used to play. Yeah. Of like five, six days ago. <laughs> it was about a week, and we a week. A week, I think so. Yeah. Because yeah. I stopped and watched Umbrella Academy on Netflix until my Such eyes bleed, and I still need to finish that. Go for Shout it. out to the Umbrella Academy. God. I like Klaus, mm-hmm. number five. Mm-hmm. I like um, Allison. Mm-hmm. I like. So you like everybody, but. <laughs> I was trying to but name everyone. V. No, I like V. V's nice. Okay. She's nice. I think I'm biased right because just because I like Ellen Page so much. I don't hate but Ellen her character. Page. I think her character gets way better in the last two episodes. It, it, like, I like it, where it, it's it, going. It just explodes. No spoilers. Mm-hmm. I like where it's going. Okay. I am not done with it yet. I can see where it's going. Mm-hmm. So I do see behind the 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 blanket. <laughs> that's not the, <laughs> that's behind not the, the term. Yeah. That's not the term. Behind the curtain. That's what it is. I do see go. <laughs> where it's going, but I'm still excited to get there. Mm. and wild stuff's happened yeah. uh, go, go finish it going back to the video game podcast we're doing right now trey baker was not reese we talked about this uh in the last episode we did mm. he, he wasn't reese and i was very upset because you can immediately tell it's not reese and it i would say is a different character because it's written completely differently is it because i never the, finished two so mm-hmm. i don't i didn't know the character no no, no, no tell tall that was the tell oh the tell tall one sorry yeah, 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 I, from I, the I didn't land. play that one either yeah i um i played it and i loved it yeah this is not Reese, though. It was really weird that they even called him Reese. I was like, we like could have kind of just it made just it. Feels like a whole di- it does. It yeah. doesn't even feel like the same guy. The, the humor kind of is different, but other than that, no. It's the same thing with Vaughn. Remember Vaughn, the weird dude that was always naked? Yeah, I saw him. He's this, he's also in the other game, okay. and he's basically a different character as well. Oh, so gotcha. it's like, why are, you, why are they doing I this? get it, but yeah. like, no one's the same. Yeah. He just makes ab jokes. 
Anyways. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he did do a lot of that. <laughs> there was a back and forth on Twitter. They actually had a Twitter spout, Mr. Troy Baker and um, Randy Pitchford. Mm-hmm. They argued that why he didn't take it. First, Randy Pitchford said, he. Uh, someone said, uh, is Reese in the game? He was like, no. Or sorry, Troy Baker in the game. He said, no. He said, no. And, you know, we picked someone else. Mm-hmm. Troy said, no, you never asked me. Yeah, then they came that. back and said, we, uh, I think he said, we asked you and you said no or something like that. Yeah. We finally get the full story. Wasn't it something about his manager or whatever? Trey Baker didn't star in Borderlands 3 because Gearbox wouldn't go union. Gearbox and SAG Afra respond. So this is a full breakdown of what happened between these two gentlemen and why their little Twitter spat went live. Mm. This is over on IGN by Adam Bankhurst. Follow him on Twitter. He's a nice man. SAG AFTRA. This is the Screen Actors Guild American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. That just flows real smooth, doesn't it? <laughs> it told me. Has sent IGN a response to Gearbox's software statement from the story below. So, I'm going to read Gearbox's statement first, and then we'll go back to that, okay? Mm-hmm. We will go and do that. So, this is their... Where is it? So, they came to me... This is all Troy Baker stuff. They're lying. Like, Troy Baker originally said this. This is over on VG247 uh, when they asked him questions about the whole Baker going union thing. And he goes, no, it was simply a matter of they wouldn't go union, he replied. And I can't do a non-union gig. And without getting too deep in the weeds of that, we had long conversations about this. We always knew going into that this was going to be a thing. They were going to take these characters and put them from the Tales from the Borderlands series from Telltale into Borderlands proper. I've been waiting for this call. They were like, do you want to do this? And I said, yes. They never, because they told never move from that position. I'm not mad. It's invariable, a completely different character, but it still stinks. I mean, So that's yeah. his, his thing. He said, I'll do it. I'll say yes. Yeah. You have to go union though, and it's and apparently going union is very very complicated, and they don't like that or I was about whatever. To say, how I mean, is, is I think they really have to sign a lot of stuff. I assume. I mean, grab a maybe pen they don't like unions. Pen. Just grab a pen because people it. really don't like unions. We're going back to the official Gearbox statement. Mm-hmm. Troy is an exceptional talent, and we were disappointed that he declined to partner in Borderlands Three. After being offered the part, we wish him the best and hope he knows the offer to collaborate with him still stands. Gearbox is a Texas company and is bound by Texas law, which means that a person cannot be denied employment because of membership or non-membership in a labor union or other labor organizations. As a talent-owned and talent-led organization, Gearbox enthusiastically works to ensure our pay and working conditions meet or exceed union standards. (laughs) We also believe strongly in hiring local uh, voice actors whenever we can which is why we're thrilled Troy's career really took off after working with us. Right in the end there seems really shady. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I was going to say. Apparently, I have heard this from someone else. Apparently, Troy does say his career did explode from this. Did not, it really? Not from Tales from the Borderland. Some game called um, okay, Brothers from the Highway, I think, or something like that. Oh. It's a real old game, and he yeah. said there was... Something he could do in the in that specifically, he could mm. practice his acting, and I guess that's what really helped him. Okay. So he he has said before he attributes it, but that still reads very wrongly. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's pretty much saying that it's like, oh, if you're it welcome. If, if, yeah, if it wasn't for <laughs> us, yeah, it does sound like that. And I also don't like Gearbox enthusiastic works to ensure our pay and working conditions meet or exceed union standards. That basically means we don't like unions, so we don't work with unions. That's what I that's what I read from that. That's the only mm. reason you would say that. We also believe strongly in hiring local voice actors. That means people who work for them, which I don't like. Mm-hmm. There was also a statement I, I read, and this is going to be off memory, so I sorry if I butcher this. The claptrap dude, the original person who made the voice, mm-hmm. originally worked at Gearbox. Yeah. He did the voice for one and two when he worked there. When he didn't work there, he went back to be the voice in three, and it became a problem. His uh, his roundabout words were, uh, it was fine when I worked with them, but when I had to get paid for the voice, suddenly it was an issue. <laughs> so it seems like they like, and I'm not going to say it, but they like getting free voices from people who work with them. Jesus. I don't know if they get back pay from work for doing their work and also doing the work in the voice acting. We don't know any of those details, 
but it's very interesting that everyone who does voices are in the team and getting paid salary. Yeah. So you assume they're asking them and not giving them any extra money. And if they do, it's not worth the voice. Yeah. Weird choices yeah. Yeah, Gear- on Gearbox's part. Mm-hmm. Now we will read the SAG AFRA comment. Quote, we are fully aware of the anti-labor right to work for less laws that help explain why Texas has more minimum wage workers than any state in the union. They're just blown back on this one. <laughs> Employers in Texas and other right to work for less states nevertheless routinely work under sag agreements with no legal obstacle at all. To the extent that Gearbox's statement reflects legitimate ignorance, Gearbox could easily have asked that question during their discussions with sag which they did not if indeed Gearbox meets or exceeds our contract standards in their treatment of performance, which we highly doubt, it would have cost them nothing to sign the union's agreement and retain the original cast for their game. While sag does not comment on member discipline matters, we observe that sag members who work for certain non-union employers not only deprive themselves of the benefits of a union agreement, they lower their standards for all their peers and facilitate the abuse and exploitation of performers. Whew. Yeah, that was a, that was a fired back. Look, unions are unions, right? We're not in a union, so we can't speak too much about it. But unions usually work, and private unions are their own business. I won't speak on if unions should exist or not, mm-hmm. but I will ex- uh, uh, make the statement that if they were so bold to say, hey, we work with Troy, and the reason they didn't work was because of sag Afra. you're pretty much saying you don't work with people who are in unions, even though that is against the law in Texas. So they could have been sued. Surprised that no one's getting sued out of all this mm. because of how aired, dirty laundry this is, by the way. Because this is all, I mean, the this is for everyone to see. All right? They're not hiding anything. Everyone's All their dirty laundry is floating into the wind while everyone screams at each other because they didn't get a job. Very interesting. Yeah. I uh, I've never been like un I guess I never really understand this type of stuff. I just seems mm. like it's just a lot going on. There's a lot going on, right? And unions are all different. Yeah. Basically it seems I don't know. I want to say the right person is Troy, right? <laughs> he seems like he's in the right. Um, this seems yeah. like one of those weird instances where it's like you don't want to say who's right because you don't know and you weren't there, but no, it yeah. does seem clearly one way on who did the right thing. Yeah. And it does seem very clear that uh, Mr. Gearbox does not want to work with the unions. And so, yeah. I guess they don't want to give more money. Alex, Destiny 2. Mm. Bungie will release at least one non-Destiny game by 2025. Halo. I like where you're going with this. Right? This is over on IGN.com by Matt Kim. Uh, this is about Shadow Keep. And then uh, they're basically <laughs> talking about Shadow Keep. I'm trying to get to what I actually want to read. Yeah, to do that, Parson says it needs to start with Destiny. One is we need to begin transforming Destiny. The Destiny that we really like, believe in, like the thing we think Destiny needs to become. I think you've seen it in the Vidoc, like the single evolving world. We need to focus on that. Harrison's told IGN that this is all something Bungie wants to accomplish by 2025 and that there is a pretty specific path for the company. So by 2025, we have a pretty specific path to make sure we transform Destiny and that we have other franchises within the microplace. Cool. Just a cool little update. Yeah. Meaning they're they're not just going to be Destiny. Sit with me, Alex. Mm. How wild would it be if if Microsoft walks over? Hey, Bungie. How you been? It's been a while. Mm. It's I missed you. All right. Why don't you come back one more time? One, one, one more, more time. time. <clears throat> I dig it. I took a sip of water. It's not water. It's Coke. Moving on. <laughs> no, I'm excited. Um, yep. I, I I'm I'm I can't wait to see what they have in store. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's what's wild is Destiny Two supported for more than five years, which is crazy for another five years on top of what we already got, which is crazy. Because mm-hmm. everyone was like, "Oh, Destiny Three will be out in two years." Nope. Nope. Yeah, they're supporting this for another five years, so I see Destiny Two sticking with us for a while. Yeah. Um, sticking <laughs> with Destiny. They had emergency maintenance following hitting all-time concurrent player records. I figured we knew there were actually going to oh, be God, yeah. uh, troubles with the servers. This is more of the whole all-time concurrent. I'm thing. surprised they let us in the the first hour. That yeah, we so just to recap what we did. 
Alex and I got on at one to play. We played for about an hour. Alex had to get off, go to work. I played for probably another 30 minutes to an hour, and then the crash <laughs> you, came. You, you came. text me, and you're like, the game crashed. It's all your fault. Yep. He did it. He went over yep. and unplugged them, and no one knew it was unplugged. Yep. But, wow. It was down for, I think, six hours, basically, mm-hmm. seven hours, something like that. I, so, <laughs> I uh, that was sad. Very sad. Well, um, but that's about it. They hit top concurrent. I do not see a metric. I think they're just saying they hit top concurrence, which is really cool. Crazy that they had to take it down and fix it such like so extremely because mm. it was like, like, hey, we've brought it down for emergency maintenance. Yeah. And now we're going to like fix it for the next six months. I did hear something interesting where someone said, why does this keep happening to online games? Why, why do we always see day ones so bad? And someone pointed out a very good point that they don't want because like the easy thing would be like just buy more servers right yeah well they made a point where it's like well it's more expensive to ha- have extra servers than just take a day one launch and have it suck yeah so i i thought that was an interesting perspective yeah because you never don't want to buy too many and or like i don't know if that's a thing yeah you rent them out yeah so what they do is i assume they rent out at, let's say 100 mm. Mm-hmm. let's say they need 200 for launch day but it's going to immediately go down to the 100 you need in mm-hmm. two days so you just ride out that two days of horrible server issues, but yeah. you'll make more money because you don't have to pay for a whole extra suite of servers. Good. I agree, probably. Uh, I hope online fidelity improves. Mm-hmm. I did he- read on Twitter, a gentleman went to download Shadowkeep, mm-hmm. and he said one-tenth of his data cap is going to be used just to download that one game. Oh, my so. God. Don't miss those days. Oh, well, uh, yeah, because I'm glad I updated my yeah, internet to we where both I have did. unlimited. We both did. We both have unlimited now, and it's very nice. Oh, did you? Were you able, mm-hmm. able to do it? Yeah. Cool. So you found the thing I was talking about? or Not that. I, got I, something I, different. Yeah, something different. Okay. Um, I still need to try and get that other thing. Okay. A uh, guy gets Doom running on McDonald's cash register. <laughs> you think your gaming rig is impressive? Not anymore. Meet Ryan Edgar, a 19-year-old <laughs> who was wonderfully honor of playing Doom on a McDonald's register. The key question with any piece of technology is, of course, whether it can run Doom. Edgar had the chance to answer this question recently after visiting a local McDonald's. The store was in the process of replacing their antiquated cash registers and because mcdonald's aren't actually in the business of selling point of sale computers they are still running windows xp edgar was able to take an old register home talking to kotako australia over dm edgar explained that he got doom going by copying z doom onto a usb uh this is a quote i downloaded z uh, z doom doom xp on it using my personal computer plugged it in in the usb in the cash register and ran it through there with auto run edgar said Using a USB splitter, Argar was able to get a mouse and keyboard working. The result, which you can see below, and then this has a little here. I want to actually want, we're, let's we're gonna live watch this video because I just want to see it run, which is wild. It's a Panasonic POS. Let's see, he's doing some things. He's doing things. Get to the point. This is a really long video. I just yeah, want to thir- watch. Yeah, it's a thirteen-minute video. Which is it's cool. It's cool. He's showing you exactly how he's doing it. Oh wow, that looks wild. He like he has it opened up, and you can see the motherboard and all that. This is cool. Yeah, it's weird how it's like a, not even just the monitor for the register. It's like the whole. It's thing. the whole it's, computer. Yeah, it's yeah, the whole thing itself. Mm-hmm. I asked Edgar what he planned on doing with the terminal now that he had gotten Doom working. "Quote: I might even just use it as my second computer." He suggested, <laughs> <laughs> adding that he'll try and get Sonic Adventure Two working on it before. Doom. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's funny. So McDonald's are just can run games. What else could they run? I wonder. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, that is interesting. I like, I like people like this, mm-hmm. where they like. I wonder if I can do this, and they just do it. Really cool, Alex. Do something like that. Get off your, get off your butt. Wow. Assassin's Creed Odyssey final update will be released this month. This is more of a moratorium, Alex. I wanted to let's do let's do a moment of silence. Thank you, thank you for respecting my wishes, Alex. Assassin's Creed Odyssey final update will be released this month. This is over by Stephen Totello of Kotaku. It's been clear for a while that Assassin's Creed Odyssey is just about done in terms of game updates. The game's free and paid add-ons are complete. Its store has been filled with extra gear to buy. Today, Ubisoft confirmed that October's update will be the game's last. The game's October update will include the addition to the in-game store of a horse called Melania. Melania? Uh, I think it's Melena. Melena? Melena. Named after, quote, 
the playful nymph, end quote. Ubisoft's house blogger explained in a post today the horse will be added along with a 1.5.1 patch that primarily focused on bug fixes. That's cool. The game's anniversary is also being recognized with a daily roll of epic mercenary and epic ship encounters starting now and running to early November. These encounters have been uh, trickled out throughout the game's first year and are being re-offered with extra rewards as the game winds down. After that, well, there is no new Assassin's Creed this year. There is most absurdly one coming out next year. Vikings, why? Question mark. <laughs> But there's also the fact that Ubisoft seems to really like updating its franchise one last time to tease a sequel in July of 2018. Ubisoft began seeding the division with quests that would unlock content in March 2019's The Division 2. In June of this year, 2017's Ghost Recon Wild has got a surprise bonus quest line to turn out to be a tweezer for the October's Breakpoint sequel. Ever see Ubisoft only do a thing twice? Me? Neither. Here's to you, uh, Odyssey getting one more final update at some point. Expected. To tease the next Assassin's Creed. I still need to, I still need to go back and finish the um, uh, Atlanta stuff. I do too. I'm stuck on episode two. Not stuck. I stopped playing. Yeah, I, I stopped playing yeah. episode two. Um, yeah, but I, it, I liked where it's going. I finished the mm-hmm. whole thing of the first one, and I just need to go back and finish off the second yeah. one. My girlfriend really fell in love with the franchise, so she's way done beating everything yeah. before I could. So I need to get back, finish that off, give it a proper goodbye. Yeah, it's last. It's lasted a good while. Oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah. This. It's a year, right? A full year of support. Um, came out last year, right? I think so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. Yeah. Alex, you can try Xbox Game Pass Ultimate right now, and guess what? Hmm. You'll get a free month plus Spotify Premium for a dollar. Oh yeah. So if you've been thinking about joining Game Pass, this is a little deal for you. You jump on, you pay the extra, and you also get Spotify Premium, which is dope. Yeah. And then there's different deals. I think you can spend a dollar. Yeah, one and two. Okay. And yeah, so you get six months of Spotify Premium for a dollar plus the ultimate on top of that. Mm-hmm. Oh, literally in three days, it'll be exactly a year since Odyssey came out. That's so cool. Yeah, it's October 5th, 2018 it came out. That's so cool. Alex, mm. that's the news. That's the news. Now we are transforming into our settling down of the episode where we relax. We pop off our collars. Undo our ties and just talk about what stuff. Imagine that. You're like people wearing collars. Mm-hmm. You just see them just, just they, they just right. come off and becomes a regular t shirt. It's party time. Right. <laughs> it's their party shirt. Oh, and by the way, PS4 crossplay exited the beta. I don't think I actually talked about that, but I meant to uh, when we were talking about PS4. But they uh, got out of beta now, oh, um, which okay. is cool. Uh, hopefully, it goes to everything. Yeah. Hopefully, we get more of these things. Mm-hmm. Alex. What's up? What is the most influential game of the 21st century? That is the topic that Mm. we're going to end the episode on. What do you think is the most influential game of the 21st century? See, now, this is hard because there's been a lot of games. It is. That is correct. Um, What is the 2000s that you think was the most influential game? There's a lot. Mm-hmm. The line. This article brings up a much Sims, Minecraft, right? right. I mean, Halo, Wii first, Sports. Halo. I feel like Halo has a really big. I think I was gonna say Halo Three. Transform shooters. Uh, uh, Halo One. Oh yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah. it would be the first one. Yeah, because Halo Three shooters. was in twenty. League starting off the whole MOBA franchise, right? Ah, uh, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Yep. Call of Duty Modern Warfare Four starting off the whole new, I would say, modern mm-hmm. trend that we see. GTA Three. Oh, I m- I remember that. I didn't play much of GTA 3. Really? I played more of 4 and 5. Yeah. 4 when I was a kid. Like, I played 3. It was, I think, was one of my first ones. Or uh, actually, Vice City was my first one. Then I, I played 3, mm. San Andreas, mm-hmm. and I played all the PSP ones. Okay. Yeah. Dark Souls. That's a good one. Yeah. Hard. That started a whole new genre of games, mm-hmm. basically. Yeah. Of action RPG, really hard games. Yeah, so everybody they call calls them, them Souls boards, Souls, yeah. Which is weird. Souls type. So the Soul Burn, I think Souls Burn, Soul uh, Souls Born game, Souls Born, Soul's yeah, Born, which mouthful. Mm-hmm. Wii Sports was funny because if you bring up Wii Sports, you have to bring up Connect and the PS <laughs> Move controllers. Yeah, and I feel like that's the most influential yet did not actually influence anything. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, got Call of Duty Four Modern Warfare. That would I think that revolutionized military shooters specifically. Oh, Halo yeah. did everything else. Like, yeah, uh, which I feel like Halo looks a lot like uh, feels plays a lot like Doom but faster. 
Yeah, I think I would say Halo. Um, Halo Combat Evolved. Yeah, because I, I mean that was that, one. Yeah. I mean that was one of the first shooters. I mean, especially on PC. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I mean, this it, that's is a where game spot, by the way. It's just it's a bunch of games everyone wrote down. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm gonna read a quick quote. Halo Go changed the conception of what games could be for a lot of players. It rocks the shooter world with ideas that have become standard to this day. And it approaches to gameplay and presentation made for that truly epic experience that games have continued to try to capitalize on ever since. But more than anything, it altered gaming for console players, elevating the experience with an amazing single player campaign. A huge and expansive game mode, and the first steps into the future of multiplayer. Playing Halo in 2001, it felt like things had changed. Almost 20 years later, we're still feeling the shockwaves. Yeah. I agree with everything. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie. I still go back to Halo 1 every once in a while. Mm-hmm. Just to feel it. Yeah. Just to feel that magnum. Oh, how overpowered yeah. it is. Yeah. That you ta-ta. shoot. It's you basically reload. a sniper in your hand. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Just shooting everything in one shot. Yeah. Such a fun, fun game. I would say Grand Theft Auto 3 is really unfinished as well. Oh, there, God, yeah. There's a few missing, I'd say. Um, I think Grand Theft Auto 3 really um, in, uh, revolutionized uh, those open world type games where you can, you know, hop in cars, free roam type of thing. Because I don't mm. think I don't think of any other game that did that back then. Like, you know, like with GTA, you know, you can hop in a car, drive around wherever you want, things like that. So now, I mean, we have... Kind wa- of expounded on the open world. Concept. Yeah, because so, like now we have what? Watch Dogs, all the GTAs. Uh, I mean, uh, what can I say? Um, does I think another big one influencing open world and mainly action RPGs, mm-hmm. Fallout 3. Yeah. Where you got, I think that was the first big example of a giant game with limitless potential. Where you could start the game, right? You do that intro and then you take out the vault. It's a very beautiful, you walk mm-hmm. out and the light shines and then you open your eyes and you see the open world, and then literally you can just go play the game. There are no yeah. linear aspects to the game. I think we see that more often than not now, especially yeah. with non-linear games. More of these <laughs> God of Wars, these uh, Horizon Zero Dawns, these um, uh, the 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 Ghost Recons, these open worlds where yeah. it's like, yeah, just do whatever. There's a main story, but it's kind of optional. You don't really have to. Sad mm-hmm. Creed Odyssey, we're just talking about it too. Yeah, this uh, this month. At the end of this month, Fallout 3 will be 11 years old. Wow. Yeah, because it came out in 2008. 2008. Wow. Yeah. 2006 to 2008 is an incredible year for video games. Yeah. I think we get Kingdom Hearts. I think we get Final Fantasy X in, mm-hmm. that, in those years. Uh, Bioshock. Fallout 3, like you said. Like, that. those are the f- insane year for games. Reminds me of 20... Should be... 17 or eight or 16 what was that really good year for games it wasn't last year it was the year before i'm pretty sure i think it was 15 or 16 so should have been 20 maybe 16 17 i'm pretty maybe. sure 2017 okay. was the one where it's like you had a game every single week oh, at the end of the yeah. year and your eyes wanted to explode from hype because too much now we're looking at this same instance <laughs> next year do you remember Mm-hmm. We have fall, uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake, mm-hmm. Cyberpunk, Last of Us 2 within a three-month period. Wh- what? Like, what? Yeah. That is insane, right? Like, yeah, it's crazy. One of those games, for sure game of the year, all three of them coming out in the same year, going to be hard to pick. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to have to do, put down some crunch time on these games. Yeah, you, so we... um. Last of Us, of course, is very influential as well with yeah. storytelling. Oh, God, um, yeah. What did you think about the new uh, gameplay coming out of Last of Us 2, mm. the preview event? What do you think? A bunch of people upset because he killed dogs a lot. Um, I, I Honestly, I thought I read something about two words. Like, something about the... It was, like, something about the dogs. They're, like, they're not... They're dogs. No, yeah, like, I know... Uh, they have, like, names and stuff. So, if you kill a dog... If oh the yeah, person yeah, okay. sees the dead dog, he'll go, "No, Fido." Yeah, you know, I thought I read something some, uh, something about that it was like opposing that or something. But yeah, no, I see, I yeah. I mean, there's just I mean, it's just I mean, or you're an gonna, enemy. Yeah. But I mean, I do like I like that they gave them like to like, you know, you, you know it is somebody's dog. Well, I like so that, like well, but, Last of Us has always been like feel your decisions. Yeah, even though I mean, you're not necessarily making the decision, yeah, um, well, it's still you need to feel the decisions. As in, like, yeah, in Last of Us One, it 
doesn't feel great to kill things like people no yeah that's what i mean the clickers don't really seem to have any sort of humanity so i don't feel bad at them but when you're killing someone in last of us they're actively clawing at your arm and gasping for air yeah i know and the yeah. camera zooms in on their face as they die yeah no so, I li- that's why i'm like people are upset about the dog things but i kind of like that they added character uh, char- a character to the dog mm-hmm. because then you're like oh crap that was somebody's dog so mm-hmm. i mean it will make you feel bad for it mm-hmm. maybe ellie does too but like you know crap. i thought it was weird that a lot of people got upset about dogs i was like well, we kill actual people in the game yeah so, so i mean i thought it was weird but i think i get it because i, I don't really i i guess i don't like the yelping yeah. i'll kill the dog but if i hear the yelp i'm like oh well see now it's a dog now i think of it as a dog yeah rather than it just being a computer thing in front yeah. of me and that's that i don't like that stuff but yeah i'm playing this game hey if they try to make you actually be yeah, in they're the trying game to make you feel yeah right they, they don't want you to if it's almost mm. and they want you is, to care it is a little counterintuitive what i'm about to say mm. and i think that's the biggest problem with last of us they want you to feel every death yeah, but that doesn't change the fact that you are killing easily twenty people a level. Yeah, so you're becoming a mass murderer essentially. Mm-hmm. So I do think that's a little weird. Like it's mixed messaging, right? You want to feel every yeah. death, and you don't want and you want to not want to do this. But at the same time, this is like an action movie, and you're just murdering and yeah. mowing down people the entire time. So I do think you have like a mixed kind of reaction to all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, that I don't necessarily agree, that I don't, I don't. I don't love and I don't hate. I don't think it detracts enough for me to honestly care. Yeah. But that is one criticism I can give the game. Yeah. But no, I don't mind the whole. I, I like that they gave him a, ca- a character. Yeah, they adding. They're adding something yeah. to it. I I don't. I I just thought it was a cool, yeah. cool thing, to bring up. I wanna. I wanna. I wanna ask you another question. Mm, what's your question? I might have some. This answers. is a new segment I like to call Weird Things I Saw on Twitter. Oh, God. Al, uh, this is Elijah's Weird Things I Saw on Twitter. Okay. Yeah, you're on Twitter. Six a lot, Fags so. will, play cup, uh, will pay couples $600 to lay in a coffin together for 30 straight hours. This is over on insider.com. <laughs> the amusement park bringing back its coffin challenge, but this time around, it's asking couples to put their relationship to the ultimate test. Mm. Thank you for coming to my. I think it's called TED Talks. I don't know what they are. But okay. uh, thanks for coming to my TED Talk, Alex. This is another segment of, I saw a weird thing on Twitter, so I wanted to tell you about it. Yeah. Again, Six Flags will pay couples $600 to lie in a coffin together for 30 straight hours. Now, biggest takeaway from these, the amusement park is bringing back the challenge. This is a previous challenge I had not heard of. Couples or friends who can spend 30 hours in a coffin together will win 600 bucks to split a pair of gold season passes for the 2020 season and a fright fest prize package the couple's coffin challenge will start on friday september 27th so it already started and it was in maryland so does that mean i can't use the 600 bucks for anything else it has to be for the tickets no they're giving you 600 dollars plus oh these plus. Gold. yeah no okay sorry there's commas i should have paused no you're good um so now do you think this 30 hours incorporate meaning like let's say you have to use the bathroom or if you get hungry you can't do anything you have to stay in that coffin i'm looking for i'm looking for like like rules. I mean, because like it, couples wise, like, let's say for example, my wife is pregnant. Yeah, she's gonna she has to pee. Mm-hmm. Are you planning on doing this? <laughs> no. Hey, six hundred bucks. I'll do it. The coffins won't actually I'll be s- buried beneath the ground, but after lying in a box for thirty hours with the lids closed, you may begin to feel like it. The unlikely duo is selected sleep. to compete are allowed to bring one friend. To, that's I like that. just sleep. You said it like so easily. You would freak out. Yeah, what you're else? claustrophobic, are you? You probably would be in a coffin. Oh, well, I yeah. probably would be too. No, I probably would. I know. I, I, I mean, I guess I feel claustrophobic because there'll be times where, like, let's see, say this I'm, is where it kills me because okay. if I could have anything, I'd be fine. Yeah. The unlikely duo selected to compete are allowed to bring one friend during fright fest hours, but they will have to leave all smartphones, smart watches, gaming devices, and other technology out of the temporary resting place. Smoking is also not allowed. So you have to go thirty hours with nothing but you staring at darkness. That's can, that's hard. I I don't know if I can yeah. do that. I can do if I had my phone. Fine. Yeah. This is like you're you're asking me to be on a vacation. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> According to the official rules, eating, checking social media, and sending emails to update the outside world on your status on your pulse will be allowed during designated breaks. Oh. When the coffin coffin lid will be open and the kids will be allowed to sit up but not leave their wooden beds. There will be a six-minute restroom break every three hours. 
But any couple that leaves the coffin outside of those breaks will be disqualified. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> You're excited now. You're like, I'm down. All 600 right, bucks? 600 bucks if you... Wake me up in three hours every hour. <laughs> three hours, I'll go back to sleep because I can sleep, man. <laughs> Six Flags America warns that participants, quote, will potentially be exposed to fog, dramatic lighting, flash photography, and extreme weather conditions, end quote. And that the rules may be altered for their safety. So it's interesting that there's a couple element. Because I guess they're not in the same coffin. They're I, just next to each other. I thought they were in the same coffin. Is that good? I'm looking at pictures and oh, no okay. one's in the same coffin and none of them seem big enough. Maybe they have a special one for you lay together. If I can lay with my girlfriend. Yeah, we could just talk. That's fine. I'll just talk to her for 30. I'd do that anyways. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so down for this. We can win 600 bucks, man. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, Easy 600 bucks of my life. They'd probably be upset. Be like, hey, like you freaking out? Huh? I'm sorry, I was asleep. <laughs> yeah, it's like it doesn't say that you can't sleep. No, no. no. Uh, the open top was. Oh, sorry. Oh, I skipped a little bit. I didn't see this part. Oh, do, 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 do. Okay, at Six Flags, first thirty hour because they've done this before. Okay, first thirty hour coffin challenge in mm-hmm. St. Louis last year. All the contestants won, but it wasn't easy. They had to deal with cold weather. Had to sprint to the bathrooms to be able to make it back in the six minute. Oh, so you're they ain't joking. They're like six minutes, and you have to go oh, run damn. pee and run back. They also had to line the coffins with the lids open the whole time, which came with its own challenges. The open top was brutal, a contestant named Brian Johnson said on Facebook. Oh, God. Lights everywhere, people talking. You could barely sleep. Oh, so you might not be able to sleep, Alex. I slept <laughs> through a hurricane. I think I'll be fine. Yeah, he did. You did do that. You did do that. That concludes. Now, I just saw a weird thing on now, Twitter and wanted to show you. if people start coming up to me and start poking me, then I'm going to be pissed off. Mm, <laughs> you wouldn't like that very much? No. I don't no. need people poking at me when I'm trying to sleep. He's like, hey, 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 get up. No, yeah, I'm going to take a picture. <laughs> no, stop it. <laughs> no, yeah, then then I'll be cranky as heck. But no, I, I mean, I say I, I say I can do it. I don't, I don't think I'll be able to. I don't to think it. I would either. Even with That'd the three cool. hour thing, yeah, it'd be, be cool. fun to try, but like, yeah. it's only if I can get the hours back. Yeah. <laughs> you know what no, I mean? It's like, if there's some sort of click situation. Yeah. You remember click? It was oh, the, you're talking about the, the, the remote click? Show. Yeah, yeah. No, you mean the movie? No. Sorry, you mean Adam Sandler? You, that you, was Adam Sandler. Yeah, you're you right. Said, you said sorry. Tim Allen. I did not. I, it's because we were just, we were just saw a commercial with Shaggy Dog. Yeah. yeah, Shaggy Dog. God Lord. God. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, God. Anyway, I wonder. I wonder if someone has been listening, being like, what "Were they it? watching Shaggy Dog? <laughs> we were not All watching right. Shaggy Dog. Our girlfriends are watching Halloween Town for some god reason." It's how it's how October. You gotta give them that. They're really people are. Re- ah. Oh God! We're talking. About this. The next topic. <laughs> it's just, it is October second of this recording. Yep. What? When was? When did everyone start caring about Halloween? Three years ago, people did not care about Halloween. Yeah. When did it, what happened? I don't know. Now suddenly it's pumpkin spice. This <laughs> pumpkins <laughs> everywhere. Put it in my mouth, pumpkins. Pumpkin hot dogs. There's pumpkin hot dogs. You've never seen these? No. I'd look it up. I Sounds swear. disgusting. We well, you would probably eat it. <laughs> but thanks. <laughs> Just because I eat anything. You would probably like it. <laughs> but um no, yeah, there was a pumpkin hot dog. I'm sure there's pumpkin corn dogs or some god awful thing. Hey, corn dogs, I got you. Do you think there's some sort of pumpkin butter? I like peanut butter, so maybe like a pumpkin p- flavored butter? I'm oh. thinking more of a peanut butter consistency where it's peanut butter. Like, you just call it butter because it's kind of butter. It doesn't I can sound very good. Itself. Pumpkin butter? It doesn't sound Sounds very like a... Something dirty, you know? If anybody knows if this is a thing, let us know. Send us your weirdest pumpkin things. Yeah. Like, uh, for instance... If you've I, seen I've the weirdest seen... pumpkin flavored thing, just... You ever had pumpkin bread? I don't know. It's pretty good. Is it? Yeah. You ever had pumpkin seeds? Yeah. Yeah, yeah usually uh, when I uh, when we carve the the pump the actual pumpkin itself, when we take the seeds out, uh, my mo- uh, my, our, my mother in law likes to like do I guess cook them or something. Yeah, like, you're supposed you to like do. oven it and salt it. Yeah, and then yeah. I guess I you know. eat the seeds like a bird. <laughs> I guess and Carrie loves that. So that's my mother. Carrie loves putting it in the oven. Yeah, roasting it, taking it out, salting it, and just and just eating it. Sorry about the weird mouth noise, ladies and <laughs> gentlemen. I, probably, I feel like I needed to make it realistic. It's funny because I'm sure somebody's listening to this. They'll be like, what the heck? I like to think that they're like, they're agreeing. 
right? Because when did this happen? There has to be know. a point where this where Halloween became popular. No one cared about Halloween ten years ago, three, five years. I'd say five years ago. No one cared about Halloween. Now all of a sudden, like, it's like, oh, I would love some coffee. Oh, you want pumpkin in it? No, I do not want that. Yeah, it's like yeah, I've seen those uh, donuts. It's like pumpkin spice donuts now. Pumpkin spice donuts. No, that sounds good. No, they're they're good. It's like I forgot the little the little. Oh, God, I forgot they were called the little. Uh, curler things i forget what they're called oh cruller cruller Cru- thank Cruller, you. cruller thank, I think yeah it is. those yeah the only reason i know that was because with the other like weeks ago <laughs> i ordered something off dunkin donuts's menu and it said yeah. what that was and i was like that's what those are called crullers or something like that mm-hmm. alex a very interesting story just popped up twitch's restrictive contract drove ninja to mixer deal so apparently, let's see, the, uh, this is over on IGN by Matt Kim. Hey, shout out to Matt Kim. The world of video game streaming shook earlier this year when Tyler Ninja Blevins announced that he would be leaving Twitch and streaming exclusively of Mark, uh, Microsoft's Mixer platform. Now Blevins' wife and manager, Jessica, shared how Twitch's unreasonable contract was a key reason behind the move. Quote, Twitch did not listen to us, Jessica said in an interview with Business Insider. Everything we were asking, it never came back reflecting our wishes, and that's been completely outside our finances. Uh, money was the last thing on our mind. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, she, he was already rich, so I assume he didn't care about the money. Instead, Ninja's contract with Twitch seemed to limit the streamer's licensing opportunities. Quote, with the wording of how that contract was going, he wouldn't have been able to grow his brand much outside of gaming, end quote, Jessica said. She says that there were already conflicts appearing with sponsors and brand partners as a result of Twitch's platform. Another reason behind the move was the toxicity on Twitch, saying it was impacting Ninja's mental health and calling the platform's chat room as, quote, pretty toxic, end quote. Jessica revealed that whereas negotiations with Twitch dragged on for months, settling on the deal with Mixer took weeks. Quote, Microsoft was so aligned with what we wanted and we were at, quote, uh, Jessica said. When Ninja announced his departure uh, from Twitch for Mixer, one of the most immediate reactions from other streamers was the amount of money Microsoft offered the popular streamer. I was one of these people. But it appears, based on today's report, that the decision to leave Twitch, uh, Twitch for Mixer involved more than just money. Ladies and gentlemen, I messed up there for a second because I looked up and I saw Alex staring at his fingers as if he just discovered he had thumbs. Alex, I'm going to run it to you. <laughs> Alex, I want a full field report. What just happened to you and why did you, why did you look at your fingers as if you had just grown three thumbs? <laughs> no, I was doing. I was just like having my hands together uh-huh. and, I, and I felt something and they were like scratching me. Right. So I was trying to figure out if, like, you know, Know, like if like a piece of my nail was like like uh, like kind of like poking out like uh so you like uh you know how when you let's say you cut your nails or something there's like a little that little or the little piece on the edge like i don't know what it's called like on the little edge it's like i felt like it was kind of like skin i guess it's kind of like prickly but i felt it down here and i was so confused i was like what the hell is going on can't. I cannot describe to you what it's like living. I don't really live with him, but spending time with Alex and talking <laughs> to him, it's just like a new thing every day. Like, I just look up and I just see. <laughs> 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 You're just looking at so intense. I just wasn't ready. I literally stuttered reading. I was like, what, what just happened? <laughs> anyway, we used to live together. <laughs> we did used to live together for like two years. It seems that Ninja's brand and organization felt pretty like he just went straight back to the story. And considering Ninja's now appearing on television shows like The Masked Singer, it sounds like Ninja's branding opportunities have grown since leaving Twitch. Did you see that, by the way? What? He was on Masked Singer. No, I didn't see that. So he, uh, look up the thing. It's, it's funny. Um, uh, it's essentially him coming out. He's like, like he, it, I think the premise of the show mm-hmm. is a, a famous person comes on in a mask and i think people have to guess where is this it's just called masked singer oh okay because i was i thought you had it as it's an... probably the most popular thing oh no no sorry i don't okay. i'm just i thought it was on the talk. this isn't free talk alex this is this is free talk we're all just having fun talking you said it's called what masked masked singer oh okay masked singer he's probably the, i think he's the very first person to do oh it. i did see this yeah okay he's yeah an ice cream suit dancing around okay yeah 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 Ninja has publicly expressed some disappointment with Twitch since his departure. Twitch promoted a, quote, porn account, end quote, on the streamer's left behind Twitch channel, something Twitch's COO had apologized for. Meanwhile, Ninja's makes your debut beat his average Twitch viewer account before dropping to more average levels. So he's, so it says the mass singer. So was he actually, he was, he was singing? I don't, I think, that, I think it's, I don't think they sing. I don't think the person actually sings. 
I assume it's one of those things where you're like, it's like a um, lip sync. Oh. I think it's one of those shows. But you don't gotcha. actually sing. Someone else is singing. Like huh. you're just play- you're just dancing and having fun. Gotcha. I might be wrong. He might be actually singing. Let's I don't see. know. I forget what song was playing. I don't know. I'm checking. But it was really it was a really funny clip. I was just scrolling through Twitter. I yeah. saw who I saw it and I was like, "What is this?" And I just played the thing and it took it off and he's like, "Who is it? Who is it?" And it was like, "It's Ninja!" And people were freaking out. I'm like, well, it's, oh, take, yeah. "It's taking him a second to take it off." Oh no, that thing is huge. I'm sure it was hard to take off. He's like, "I need help." It Someone looks like he help. needs help taking it off. Someone help me. That's funny though. No, oh, yeah, but it it was it's a it seems like a fun show. It seems like one of those shows that you like get on j- mm-hmm. just to promote something else. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's funny though because uh, um Mr. Chow is in there. I forget his actual name, but I always call him Mr. Chow because from Hangover. Oh, and they, I know you don't mind. Yeah, the, the Asian guy. Hmm. Um. I didn't know this till like uh, a couple of months ago. I, I think my wife told me, but he was he's at, he was actually or still is a doctor, because he has a ta- he has a uh, stand up or whatever, and he was talking about like he's an actual doctor and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, he's yeah. A, he has a doctorate. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's he's he. I I didn't like that special a lot, but he he is a cool guy. Yeah, yeah. Do we got anything else for? I'm looking for through. I'm looking through. I'm just taking a glance, re look at IGN, and see if we have anything else for free talk. So if that, go ahead. I was about to say, as you're looking, if anybody is interested in Project X Cloud, I saw the thing earlier. Uh, you can sign up for the Project X Cloud beta, and they're gonna uh, they are gonna, you know, select a couple people, but you can sign up, and it's starting in October. Looks cool. Yeah, it looks cool. It's only I would for sign and, up, it's, but only it's only for, for Android, Android right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I signed up. Hopefully, I can get a mm-hmm. a thing. That'd be so cool. God, I I, I hope. Yeah. I, I want to try it. Yeah. Because I have. Did a, you see this new Surface Pro? Yes, the Surface Pro Three. This it's, thing looks wild, dude. It's so thin. Whoa, super thin. Yeah. Removable hard drive. Yeah, like I saw a picture where he just took the panel off. Dual four K external crazy. displays. This thing looks cool. Whoa, this looks really cool. Yeah, Elijah, Elijah comes with got, a pen. Elijah's been really wanting a Surface Pro. I love so. I love I just love I don't know. I I, I love how they two look. Surface Pros <laughs> and we'll and we'll talk Stop. the heck out of it. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just looks really cool. I yeah. I love how they look and it's super sleek looking. No, yeah, it is really nice. Um but they just walked out and just held, held it out. It's mm-hmm. weird how thin it is. Looks yeah, like an iPad. <laughs> yeah, like much. that's how thin it is. Whoa. Well, remember when we went that's to a thousand dollars. Remember we went cheap. We, remember, we went to Best Buy and we saw those Surface Pros that were over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah those, those are really cool. Nice. Those are cool. It comes with a pen to write it. I guess. Oh, did you see the new Mortal Kombat stuff? Yes. Terminator. Yes. That looks awesome, mm-hmm. doesn't it? That looks wild. This dude just blowing people apart. Gotta tell you, the voice acting, awful. But <laughs> looks cool. I saw, all I saw was a little image because it was on Instagram. How about- he, I watched his like actual uh, fatality. He sends mm. him to the f- future Yeah, and uh, to get killed by a Terminator. Yeah. So awesome. Yeah, I that is like a cool. cool that's such and a it's cool funny idea. You saw the like I think it was in Terminator Two. He had a shotgun in like in a box of roses or whatever. But in this but one, it was a, yeah. a Johnny Cage. It's a Johnny Cage, and he yeah. steps on him. That's hilarious. Yeah, hilarious. And then they have that new dual screen Surface Neo, um, which is the foldable phone they have. Oh yeah, I did yeah. see that. That's that's brand new as well. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been your Easy Achievers gaming podcast thank you so much for listening if you like that please give us five stars anywhere you watch us it helps a lot go over to youtube like us there give us the watch time uh grab the mouse scroll to the bottom left corner of that screen click it and you've now subscribed thank you so much if you love us support us over on patreon.com slash easy achievers you help us out you show us support we upgrade we sound better we have more resources to deal with we thank you guys again so much for listening if you have no money don't worry be a free loader just like us just chill around like our stuff engage with us on our social medias thank you again for listening see you next week bye bye